Okay, so welcome Firecatchers. We are back. Uh, so we've just finished the classroom event. If you haven't caught the classroom, elevate your praise. Uh, feel free to take a look at that. And I'm just going to it all. Um, take a look at that. And, but right now we're going to be talking a little bit more about the Bhutan ministry trip. You are invited to go up the mountain and worship God. So let's talk about that. If you have some questions, unmute yourself and just kind of speak that that's fine. Like this is this quite, this is for you. I'm going to actually show you a bit of things. I'm going to tell you about why Bhutan. And first of all, we just, I didn't know where Bhutan was when I first was invited. You kind of have to look, it's in South Asia. So the ministry trip is actually Bhutan and Thailand. The focus is actually going to be Bhutan. We're going up to the mountains to, to worship, but we will start and begin in Thailand. I'll be talking about those in two separate, like first we'll talk about Bhutan. Uh, so in 2000, two years ago, I was in Bhutan and it is, we prophetically, like physically stuck a shovel in the ground where there would be a hotel would be built. Now, Bhutan is this beautiful Asian country. Um, it's the only Asian country that has cheese in their diet, which if you like dairy and cheese, that's a bonus because you don't get that in Asia. And the food is actually really, really good. It's um, flavorful. They have a few exports that do not go outside of Bhutan. Bhutan is a closed country. It is closed like uh, South Korea or North Korea, actually. Uh, it is a Buddhist country. Um, unlike North Korea, their leader is uh, is great. They have a great leader, although Buddhist, it's a great country. They have a king. They revere their king. It gave me a huge understanding about what a good king does for the kingdom. Um, and he's just, he does, like in North America or Western world where um, royalty is kind of like characters, they, they have no power. They're just kind of figureheads. They're they're kind of larger than life, um, but in lots of parts of the world, um, but especially Bhutan, Thailand as well, the king royalty actually means something. They do something good for the people. So you can have a good king or a bad king and it will impact the way that the people are treated. And the, we have, um, so I was invited to go there. It's closed. You can't, you, I mean, it's, it's, you can get a tourist visa, so it's not closed. You can't go there, but you cannot go there unless you have a vi uh, visitor's visa and that you are part of a tour. So the tour, and you can only go to the places like Tibet, you can only go to the places that are on your visa. You cannot deviate from um, the places that you're allowed to go. There's kind of rules around it. You're not to go to into their homes. It, they don't want foreigners and nationals mixing. Uh, and, and you certainly can't go to church. Um, when we were there, the travel guide, he is a pastor, uh, but he moonlights as a travel guide. That's how he gets people in. So he has an official business and, and this hotel was an official business that we had put the, the stake in the ground. Um, but it was going to serve not only as a means to make income for for the church there but also that they could have it was a larger area that they could have conferences that they could have bigger bigger groups and that they would uh it was beneficial for them to own the hotel instead of just uh putting you up in other hotels where they don't get the benefit so that is good he loves commerce um and commerce and ministry absolutely mix and so this was just a way that he could do this and so we went to church under under cover I've not now the only thing that would have happened to us by going to church is we would have been deported what probably would have happened to him our guide and our host uh, would have been um, less um, e less lenient than just deporting uh, and so when we go it's important to speak uh, in code um, and not be overt in our operations. I realized at that point that I would make a very, very terrible, terrible spy because I cannot keep my mouth shut for nothing. But um, nothing happened. <laughs> the Lord projected, closed the ears of those that needed to he not hear what I was saying. Uh, but so we just need to be aware of that. It's, so it's kind of exciting. I mean, I don't know about you. I've never gone to church under the threat of, of you know, something 
not nice that I wasn't allowed to go. So that, that added some, something of an element of, of importance to the, of, of the church going. But what we did, even though, uh, so we did connect with the church there, but we went up to the, the mountains and we worshiped all along the way. And we would, and you would see, because it's such a Buddhist com- country, every high place is full of uh, idols and altars and little, they call little uh, stupas. And so the stupas are these uh, um, buildings, like kind of like shelters where presumably the spirits would reside. And then they have these, these little miniatures that they would put as kind of a symbolic of, and then the prayer flags, if you've seen the Buddhist prayer flags, you see those everywhere. I did when we were kind of uh, on worshiping in the mountains in the, in amongst these, these prayer flags, it looked like, uh, to me, it looked like dirty la- laundry, like laundry lines and these prayer flags. And so when you were flagging, you kind of had to make sure that you weren't getting caught up in there. Like, I, I actually thought that that was very symbolic and prophetic that um, these lines were trying to, to tangle, entangle our flags. So we just had to be aware. And we didn't kick anything down. We didn't pull anything down. That was not our mission. Our mission was just to worship the Lord. Um, like I said before, when the, when the glory of God comes in, it pushes other things out. So we don't need to actually do that work. That was not the work that we were supposed to do. It was just to minister to the Lord. So that was really exciting. And so we went to a lot of the, um, we were there, there for four days. And we went to several of the bigger cities. Bhutan is very mountainous. It's in the Himalayas. And it, so even though it's a super, super small country, there's actually less than a million uh, Bhutanese people. And they, so it's hard to get to the Eastern Bhutan, but this trip we're going to be taking to Eastern Bhutan. We're actually going to start the trip with celebration. So you as the fire catchers are going to be able to participate in what God is, has already done. And you're going to see some confirmation about that. We're going to celebrate that building of the hotel. It's going to be commissioned next May. And, and then we're going to take uh, worship into Eastern Bhutan and start there and go where mo- many foreigners do not go. So that is, that's something really fortunate. Um, <clears throat> there is, I'm going to take you over to this page. Hang on here. Can you see this? Can I get a, this is in my, yeah, thumbs up. Okay, so this is, if you go to our website, uh, catchthefireworshipflags.com slash Bhutan, uh, B-H-U-T-A-N. Can you pop that into the, the chat, Carianna, please? This is what you'll see. I just kind of want to explain a little, this is a very long page and we have a lot of Q&A. Uh, just to reserve your spot, all you have to do is you'll start to, you'll enter into our email uh, list of people who are interested. Now, 24, why 24? So the, what happened with the 24 is I actually saw a vision. I have been, have a vision to take fire catchers around the world. Like, I, this has been my prayer. I mean, we can go and worship anywhere. Really, I feel that that is, that is true. Um, but at the same time, I want to, if God is actually is inviting us to go somewhere specific because he's going to do something specific, then we're going to respond to that. Uh, we actually started that this summer at the fire catchers recharge in Whistler. So in Whistler, Canada, we went there, uh, Jen was there. It, oh, so amazing. So amazing. So that was just a taste of what I believe God is going to be doing. And, uh, so 24, I had this as I, we were praying before. So Glenn is, Glenn Owen. Oh, uh, Glenn Willows is the other lead, team lead. Now, I've gone on two mission, ministry trips with her before. Um, she's a career missionary. Kind of some of these contacts are hers. But we, as we were praying, considering this, I was like, I have this vision of 24 um, to represent the 24 elders that are going to be going. So um, I, I believe that there will be 24. There's five. So there's 19 spots left. So you're, so I hope that you can be one of them, uh, but all, it, reserving your spot, all that means is you're going to get an email and, and then there will be follow through. Um, 
with some deposits and stuff. So we're going to be starting. So here, I actually could not show you any pictures. I had some worship pictures of some of the team and the people that we'd be meeting there. I can't put them on social media because we have to protect their identity. So this is, this is actually my team. Um, there's Glynis. That's her. We went to Tiger's Nest. This is not going to be part of our trip, but definitely, definitely worth uh, an extra day. There's a little bit of an extra cost in hiking up. This is an eight kilometer. It is, it is difficult. I'm not going to lie. It's difficult. And I felt that with every step of going up was an, an avid act of worship. It was a warfare act to walk that distance but incredible. Uh, it's probably their most famous. If you actually Google Bhutan, this image is going to show up. So from here, you still have to go down and up. Um, so this is the last kind of picturesque uh, photo stop. But here we were worshiping. This was in their, their temple. This big Buddha overlooks the entire city. We worship that whole place around there, some Bhutanese monks. Now these two pictures are in are in Thailand. Um, so that's, we can read a little bit more about what I've just said. Now this Q&A, there's lots of information here. If you have any questions, we can definitely ask me. We're gonna have another kind of um, information night before the deadline for deposit. The $500 deposit is going to be due on November 15th. It talks about um, so when we're going, where we're going, you do need visas. So, but all of that's going to be taken care of for you in in Thailand. It's gonna you're gonna need a visa. Almost everyone Canadians, especially in the Western world, you'll need visas for Thailand. Although it's free and you get them at the airport. So as soon as you arrive, you will go through customs and you'll have your visa. So you don't have to worry about that. And the visas and any travel documents and everything that you need. Or Bhutan will be taken care of you will uh, that has to actually all be booked through the travel guide um, and then the Bhutan, the Bhutan add-on now Bhutan is an expensive country to travel to and it shouldn't you wonder why because South, South Asia is very cheap for travel <coughs> I mean aside from getting there but it's it's really it's really an inexpensive place to visit Bhutan because it's closed they have a very they have a foreigners tax so the foreigners tax is uh 250 um with a, there's a couple of other charges there but it's 250 a day so it's kind of like an all-inclusive so that 250 a day does get you your hotel and and three meals and so and all the, the visas and stuff and so that's where the cost comes from it's not it's not an inexpensive cost it's three 33.50 and then um an extra 300 dollars if you're going to stay that extra day um jen said you actually told me which i didn't change so i've got to make sure that but the first deposit is due on the 15th um so what's not included is going to be uh your airfare international airfare so we're all going to be meeting in bangkok so there'll be a time and a date but you'll need to meet in bangkok and you'll need to get to the bangkok hotel on your own once you're at the hotel then everything will be taken care of um and then any personal expenses obviously and gifts snacks so meals will be taken care of but snacks um and if you're not a fan of of fish snacks or shrimp snacks you may want to bring some kind bars or some of your own bars I tend to tell granola bars, although I do like local food. So we're going from April 27th to the 8th. The 27th is a Monday. Uh, keep in mind that you actually have to be in Bangkok by the 27th. So you'll probably, depending on what your flights are, you'll probably have to book your flights on the 25th or 6th to make sure that you get it there. Cause it's depending on where you are, it's 16 hours ahead of me on the West coast. So figure that um, you can figure out where that is and then May 8th practically don't book any don't book your flights until we've actually booked our flights into Bhutan or those are settled because you may actually be able to fly out on the on the May 8th and if you fly out on the May 8th in in from Bangkok chances are very likely depending on your flight patterns but you'll probably arrive pretty much at the same time as the time that you leave so you'll also arrive home on the 8th, which is a Friday, but, and if you feel like you want to go to Thailand, um, 
I've been there a few times now. Um, everyone, the other, there's lots of great places. So if you want to extend anything and have some questions about travel, um, the packing, what to do. That is, what's that? There's the question I, so on my heart is, it's all about this 24. And so that's where it comes from. The fire catchers, we are going to be going around the world. We're starting here. We're starting here and we're going to see what God's doing. Um, I love this quote by John Piper. Missions exist because worship doesn't. So let's make sure that we eradicate the need for missions by making uh, worship on every high place. Uh, that is, I'll stop share. I'm going to see if there's any questions. Any questions? Unmute yourself. Uh, because if you have this question, most likely someone else will who would be watching this at a later date. Can you hear me? There's so much, there's just silence. If I'm going to give you just another minute. You can also do yes, no, and then I can see if if I can to wait for you. It was that clear, huh? All right. So I'm great. I'm glad that I, I made everything so <laughs> clear. <laughs> no questions. I've explained everything. I'm sure that there will be some, some more information coming. I'm really excited and I'm really excited to share this beautiful experience. Oh, in Thailand, we're going to be going. So part of what we're doing in Thailand is we're, uh, we're traveling across the world. So we need a little bit of downtime to be able to adjust to, to the different time zone. So um, we're going to have opportunities to play together, to work, to be together. I mean, unity is team unity is super important. We don't, we don't, minimize that at all so we will be doing some some going to some significant sites um, and sightseeing and but the uh, we're also Thailand as you know like sex trade um, tra sex trade is rampant um, it's it'll as women it depends on I me mean, what there will be some men but as women we will have a different experience i know that when i had gone to when we were in the kind of the red light district when i was with my family i've got a teen son and a husband when i was kind of separate like the the things that were how what they were seeing and the invitations they were getting was much different than when i was with them anytime i saw two men uh two white men in uh, in Bangkok, I, it made my heart sick because because you just know you know what they're there for, um, and you see these brothels and you see them, and so we're going to have an opportunity to to minister to them and just to love love. We're going there with the heart of love, and that's that's all it is. And so, um, and love will compel us to do whatever Holy Spirit wants us to do. So we're going to be doing that in in Bangkok for a few days. So just a so we get to do that in Bangkok. We get to have fun together. We get to um, kind of meet together. We're going to be meeting on Zoom and pre preparing before, and so that there will so that we'll have some um, we'll know who each other is by the time we get there, and then and also time the time change difference. So uh, if you have any questions about international travel, if that's never if you've never done it, uh, um, I'd be happy to answer. You can answer it. Ask me privately or anything else. So I'm gonna. I don't see any questions, so I'm going to leave it there and stop record. <laughs>